You know, I've always sort of been a doodler or artist or, or what have you. Um, coming up, my mom was an artist, um, although she was never a professional practicing artist. Um, quite a bit of her time was put into taking classes. And some of my first memories were going to, to college with her and sitting in the, um, the classroom while she was drawing or sculpting or whatever. Um, you know, so always sort of, sort of been, uh, been a creative type of some sort. Uh, for those of you who don't know where I was, where I was brought up, um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, which is a little bit south. Well, went to school in Baltimore, grew up south of Washington, D.C. Um, the area that I grew up in is a fairly racist, sexist, homophobic, closed-minded area. Um, so didn't really suit me too well. Um, I think that was part of the reason why I kind of retreated and, and spent hours drawing in my room by myself over the years. Um, you know, so from, from there, I mean, going into college or going into to high school, you know, I was always a little bit further than most of the people just because I spent such an excessive amount of time drawing that, uh, you know, going into high school, I started just teaching myself how to screen print. Um, you know, it got to a point when in high school, I kind of just went off and did my own thing and they left me alone and I was happy to do that. And, uh, you know, so that was the fir first time where I started screen printing. Um, these are some of the amazing drawings that I did when I was a teenager. Well, actually, when I guess when I was around 10 or 11. So maybe not the most beautiful things, but that was what I spent the majority of my time doing. more amazing drawings. These, I think, were when I was nine. Um, so th this takes me to the screen printing, though. So in high school, I just started teaching myself how to screen print. Um, they were happy to let me kind of go off and do my own thing. You know, and this is where, really where the first time where I started kind of developing my style or, or sort of honing in on what it was that I wanted to do. Um, so throughout high school, did that. Um, managed to lie my way into a couple screen printing jobs, got into the jobs, screwed up every shirt that they had, they fired me, lied my way into a couple more jobs, and somewhere along the way I learned how to screen print. Um, you know, for the screen printing, for the most part, it was commercial work, you know, doing boring logos and crap like that for companies that I really didn't like, but it was a check, um, allowed me to kind of be alone on my own, gave me the money that I needed to do what I wanted to do, and so that was sort of how it how it went. So through high school, you know, screen printing was the primary medium that I used. Going into college, um, I went to Maryland Institute College of Art, which is in Baltimore, Maryland. And, you know, when I first got to, to college, it was an amazing place simply for the fact that nobody noticed me for the first time in my life. Growing up in the, in the, in the town that I did, you know, walking around with the Mohawk wasn't exactly you didn't really blend in. So I spent the majority of my middle school years getting beat up every day and having stuff thrown at me. So going to, to art school was amazing because nobody noticed me. I did my own thing. You know, I was able to kind of retreat and just sort of be one of the crowd. And, uh, you know, so for, for that fact alone, like I kind of feel like Baltimore is where I became the person that I am. Um, throughout art school, though, it, you know, I, I enjoyed art school just in the fact that it gave me the time to to only draw or create or do whatever. But the, the downfall of the school was that it was a sort of, sort of era where everything had to mean something. Like you couldn't just draw like a hole in the road. Like the, the hole had to represent like the, you know, the abyss of like human existence or something like that. And for me, like I'm a very pragmatic artist. So, you know, I kind of existed simply on an aesthetic level for, for many years, but kind of fighting against that sort of induction of like the art school to try to make it mean more was, was a difficult era to kind of go through. At the time, this was the art that I was doing. Um, you can see sort of the, if you take a look at all the dots on the walls, you know, those were actually tiny little Ziploc baggies, each one which had pictures in it. You know, so you can see even back on an early early stage, I was still a fairly obsessive person, you know, so going back and taking a look, you can imagine the amount of time that it took to to put this up. you know, and I mean, you know looking back, I'm, I'm glad that I went through it, but 
I also kind of feel like this art really isn't the art that I am. Um, yeah, pardon me as I try to figure out how these things are going. Um, in school, this was my uh, studio, as you can see, full of clutter and crap and tons of stuff that I was hoping that would uh, provide divine inspiration for me to actually make something that looked good, um, all of which failed miserably at the time. Now, while I was in college, the, one of the most defining points in my life was I got in a car, uh, bicycle accident, managed to slide on my face for 20 feet, broke my neck in three places, and dislocated my hand in four places. So for four months, I had no idea of whether or not I was going to be able to walk, if uh, I was going to be able to write. The doctor said, you know, when we take this brace off of you, um, there's a good chance that the bones may not have healed, that your neck may snap, and you may be paralyzed for the rest of your life. Um, in addition, the splint that I had on, there's a, he said there's a significant chance that you may get arthritis um, early on and not be able to use your hand. And as it turns out, even nowadays, I do have problems with my hands from, from cutting stencils you know, carpal tunnel syndrome, arthritis, and things of that nature. Um, you know, so after I got out of school, I mean, I started, started exploring a little more photography. At the time, I was working at a Kinko's Copies, which I don't know if you have that over here, but it was basically a copy, you know, shop that was really popular in the 80s and 90s in the U.S. You know, while I worked there, it was a pretty mundane, droll job. Um, managed to humor myself by spending hours on end copying my own photos for free and ignoring all the customers. So after, I think, two years of working there, I finally called it a day and quit. But before I did, I managed to do quite a few of these copies, which these are Xerox transfers that were based on the photos that I was taking as I was traveling around, as I was going up to New York. And so with these, I mean, they're color copies that are then transferred on a printing press. Um, you dump a bunch of xylene on the paper, run them through, and then the emulsion of the, the copies actually wear off. Also, along the way, if any of you have any uh, questions, feel free to fire away. You know, again, these are more of the Xerox transfers. You know, so you can see, even back in my early 20s, I still had an interest in uh, architecture, which, for those of you that aren't familiar with my work, will take a, you know, you'll be able to see later on how that kind of developed into the stencils that I'm doing now. Now, after I left the, the coffee shop that I was working for, me and a couple guys managed to buy an enormous warehouse in, in Baltimore. Um, warehouse is about 6,000 square feet, which since most of you probably don't know what the square footage is, it's roughly the size of four or five of the, the galleries where new art is being held. So if you put like four or five of those together, that was roughly the size of it. This is a photo of one of the, the corners. Um, during this time, we started doing, me and a few friends, we started doing uh, you know, art shows and music shows to kind of help pay for the rent. Also, it was just in a mass, such a massive space that it was a shame not to use it for something. So this was kind of the beginning of me actually, you know, throwing art shows and getting more involved in the community. Um, again, another picture of the, the, the warehouse in the background that you can see. <coughs> 